Welcome back to the Oregon Makers channel. Today we're making a vintage western sign. And I got this barn wood from a salvage wood place in Portland. And as you can see, they've done nothing but take it off to the barn. It is extremely dirty, but used a wire brush. Didn't want to sand it or anything because I want to keep all that weathered texture. So it's like shiplap siding. So I'm cutting the um, shiplap overlap part off. So it's thicker on one side and thinner on the other. Each board is different width. And the boards are like, they're really flat on one side, but they're really cupped on the other. Like they're like kind of like a log cabin finish on the inside, or the underside, I guess. So I'm going to deal with that here in a minute, but just taking the edges off, kind of arranging them, trying to get what's the best look I want, and then I'm going to run them through the planer um, to get them all to be a uniform thickness and to get that back flat so it will lay flat. Ultimately I'm going to uh, glue these down to a sheet of plywood. So I spared you the spreading of the glue and just kind of showing you how I've glued stuff up and using calls there in the middle to keep the panel flat and little spring clamps to keep the edges flat. So the, while that dries I'm going to work on the edging. And So this is tongue and groove, cedar, uh, rough on one side, smooth on the other. And I'm basically cutting the tongue and the groove off but leaving the bevel that was with the siding. I'm just kind of rough cutting it to the sizes I need. And then I'm going to give it a little rustic paint job. I've got this chalk paint which dried matte, which I kind of like for doing vintage stuff. Um, and I'm not going to be too careful about this because I want it to look weathered. This is a painting technique that um, it's easy if you don't think about it too much. Um, I don't know. You either have it or you don't, I guess, when it comes to painting weathered stuff. Um, I'll show you what it looks like here in a second. Um, you want you know, to leave dry brush areas and you want it to look somewhat natural to why the paint would fail. So you can kind of see how I left it on the edges. And then we're going to let that dry. And then we're back at it and we're going to do the rough side which will take a little bit more paint, but this will be kind of the inside of the sign. And then instead of cleaning my brush in between coats here, I just wrapped it in saran wrap. Okay, so now I'm taking the clamps off while the glue is not totally dry. It's still kind of gummy on the squeeze out. And I'm using a fake credit card that you get in the mail. I saved those. Um, they make great glue scrapers. And I'm trying to scrape the glue up with not marking the weathered barn look. So here you can see I'm kind of coming in at either edge of it and popping all that glue off. Looks great. Now I'm doing the bottom. And then off camera I spray painted the black where I had knot holes. So once the sign is, the wood part of the sign is on the plywood, it'll be black behind. Got to make it disappear. And then this is my homemade vacuum bag press here, minus the vacuum bag and the press. So I'm just using calls and clamping it correctly on my table throw a couple of boxes on there. Let that dry. And I'm going to cut it to final size. So get this ready for the panel saw. And for some reason I didn't turn on the camera. So there you see it. Squared up. Uh, now I'm cutting the miters 
for the border of the sign. Not uh, using a tape measure, I'm just marking it. And got everything to fit really nice. So now I'm labeling which piece goes where and moving that aside. And I've got another piece of cedar here that I'm going to cut down for the French cleat mounting system. Um, I used to work in a display company um, and we used French cleats for just about every sign out there. Um, interior and exterior depending on how you did it and the way I'm doing it uh, you'll see at the end but I'm just gonna hide the French cleat so the sign will be flush to the wall. Set my table saw to 45 and the height to what I need and I'm just gonna cut the tongue off and the reason I'm using tongue and groove cedar is I had it left over from a job I did this summer. Okay, so now we're going to cut the stencil. I was in the Cricut aisle at the craft store and saw that Cricut had stencil material. I was like, well that's pretty cool. So I bought it and did my design in Illustrator, sent it over to the Cricut. This is kind of a vinyl um, material, it weaves really easy, and in the background my neighbor went crabbing and he's cleaning his boat. So this is where I, I had some challenges with it. The transfer material that Cricut sells is way too tacky for this material. I don't know how you transfer it. Uh, you know a 3M product with low tack probably would be better but I'm having a heck of a time getting the transfer tape off of the stencil ends up ripping the stencil. And then the stencil material itself is not sticking to the wood at all. I probably should have done a test before I cut it, but we're gonna try this again. So let me show you how it works in the Cricut. So this is the Cricut Design Space software and I've uploaded all my I pre-paneled it in Illustrator and so I'm importing each panel and just checking my size making sure um, that it stayed true that's one problem the Cricut has is you import SVGs and it loses its sizing um, so that one came in okay and I'm setting the offset to a quarter inch um, the Cricut is 12 by 24 is its cut size but not really it's 11 and a half by 23 and a half. So I did my panels well within that. I think they're 10 and a half by 23. Um, grab the first one and setting up, it asks you what kind of material, and so I'm telling it the cardstock. It says load the material. So I just have 8 and a half by 11 cardstock that I'm tiling down on that Cricut mat. And I'm going to load it. And it will sense that it's loaded and say press go. So that's what I'll do is press go. And then it thinks about it and it starts sending the data across. I have it hooked up with a USB. Some crickets are wireless. And it starts sending the cut file and starts cutting. I obviously sped it up. It's not that fast. Okay, it says it's done and to unload the material, so then I'm pressing the unload button. And then you hit finish. And I always, I don't save each little job and I'll just hit create a new job. And then you're back to square one again. Alright, while it's still on the mat, so the mat has a little adhesive to it, 
Um, I'm going to tape together the seams and then I'm going to start weeding it. And then I'm going to add tape to uh, areas that once I pull it off the mat it's going to cause me some problems. So I'm just kind of reinforcing those, kind of bridging that area. And that's how you do one panel on the Cricut. So back down to the shop. Very happily wad this up. Not happy with this material at all. It might work great on metal or something super smooth, but it just doesn't stick to wood. So yeet it out of here. And we'll start laying out the paper. Uh, lots of blue tape everywhere. When I started weeding, uh, near the end of the sign here that I'm working on now, I left a lot of elements still kind of attached. thought that was easier to weed it as I was putting it down. So you see me uh, with the yellow cutting board. Um, I'm cutting like a little diamond into the paper and then covering it with blue tape and that's what I'm doing with all the like the centers of the letters to keep them where they need to be. old sign making trick there. So here we go, there's the stencil ready for paint. So I want this to be, oh let me, the materials, let's talk about that. That's just a palette paper I put on a cutting board. So I'm using an off-white and a beige, a brown and a light yellow. Um, I didn't use the brown for the lettering, I used the brown later. Um, but I want this to look aged, so I don't want to put white paint on it. So I'm mixing it kind of as I go. I'm looking to have the colors almost like streaking vertically, like the, hand, the sign was hanging there for a long time and some parts got more weather, more sun, more water than other parts. So I'm doing the tiny little bits up top here in kind of the same color range. And the little curly cue that's still black, uh, there's a knot right there, which kind of worked out pretty well. So using a stencil brush, just kind of pounding it right into the stencil. I'm not brushing it, I'm just tapping um, and constantly mixing paint. and. As I'm mixing, I'm starting to change the color as I go. You see, I'm kind of painting it vertically um, through sections. And working my way down to the end. And this is where I start to mix in the uh, yellow color versus the beige. It's kind of almost that pure off-white right down where the L is. Tumbleweed. And the horse I have pretty white as well. Okay, so that's it painted with the stencil. And I get some help from Bailey because this is going to be unwieldy to get the stencil off. And there it goes. Kind of an age sign. You can see how the color shifts there. You'll get a better look at that. All right, now I'm going to add accents with the black. So I've mixed black and brown together and constantly um, doing that. Uh, I pulled up on my phone, which I'm holding in my left hand. I googled uh, horses noses so I could paint the nose, and I uh, thinned down to paint with water, and uh, it's acrylic paint to get that kind of vignette in the nose. And then I'm just doing classic drop shadow uh, painting here with the black. I'm, I'm using a regular, uh, like a fan, flat uh, paintbrush, uh, but I'm still using that kind of stencil technique where I'm just kind of tapping it on. I'm not doing any brush strokes, it's just a bunch of taps. 
So I highlighted the horse and I want to highlight the little uh, artistic lines here, um, just the under to make them kind of look like a drop shadow. Keeping the western look. So this is for a friend who I did the tile table for. I'll link that video here. Um, she retired to her dream ranch in Washington and she's named it Tumbleweed Flats and she asked me to make a sign for her. So this is what I'm doing. Okay, done with painting. Horse turned out great. I, I really like it. Nose turned out good. The eye turned out good. You know, I kind of designed it knowing I was going to do a stencil, so that's kind of why it's shaped the way it is. Knots look good. Alright, now I'm going to mount the French cleat to the sign. And I'm gluing this, and then I'll reinforce it with some screws. And the other part there, will that's what will mount to the wall of the barn. And then I just have the same thickness further down. Um, and it's to create a standoff. Um, so this the, the plywood's going to float a little bit. Uh, you'll see when I put the trim around. And flip it over, and time for trim. Make sure everything still looks good. And I'm going to... Uh, Reinforce the corners. I'm going to use glue there and just glue to the trim. And then uh, three brad nails to one direction, one the other. And then brad nails along the side. And I'm putting the nail into the plywood, not into the distressed wood. You'll see I have a little stick that I use to gauge how deep that is. That's how you make a vintage Western sign. I hope you like it. I really like it. And I hope the client likes it because I've been hiding it from her.